So the quadriceps muscles are some of the most important muscles in the whole body, let alone in the lower limb. In this video, we're going to show you the anatomy of these muscles and talk a little bit about how they might link to clinical practice as well. If you're ready, let's dive in. So everyone, let's turn to our 3D anatomy model so we can show you the quadriceps muscles. So first of all, the term quadriceps, that tells us that there are four individual muscles in this group that make up the collective quadriceps. Those are rectus femoris, vastus medialis, vastus lateralis, and vastus intermedius. And we'll go through all of these individually to show you what they're all about. So first of all, rectus femoris, considered to be the biggest and most powerful of the four. So this muscle has two heads. It has a straight head that originates from the anterior inferior iliac spine of the pelvis and a reflected head, as we can see just here, which originates from the supraacetabular groove, which is basically a small groove superior to the acetabulum. The insertion for this muscle is into the superior patella, where it turns into the quadriceps tendon that then blends with the patella tendon, which inserts into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. Next, we have the vastus medialis muscle on the medial side of the set. Now, if we take off the rectus femoris muscle, we can see how this muscle originates from the intertrochanteric line, the line in between the two trochanters of the femur, as well as a second attachment to the linear aspera of the femur as well. From there, this muscle also runs down and like the rectus femoris, it inserts into the quadriceps tendon via the superior patella, and the quadriceps tendon then blends with the patella tendon to insert into the tibial tuberosity of the tibia. Next, we have vastus lateralis located on the lateral side of the femur. So this muscle has its origin from the greater trochanter of the femur, as well as a secondary attachment at the linear aspera too. Like the others, it also inserts into the quadriceps tendon, which then blends into the patella tendon, inserting into the tibial tuberosity. And finally, we have vastus intermedius, right down the middle, which sits underneath or deep to the rectus femoris muscle. The origin of this is the anterior femur around the intratrochanteric line, as you can see. And like the other muscles, it joins on to the quadriceps tendon, which then blends into the patella tendon, joining in to the tibial tuberosity. Now, as for the nerve supply for these muscles, as you can probably imagine, what key nerve runs down the anterior portion of the femur? Of course, it's the femoral nerve. And all four muscles take their nerve supply from this nerve. So now let's talk about clinical application. And if we look at research from Cross et al, we can see that when they looked at muscle strains in footballers under MRI, the most commonly injured of the four muscles was the rectus femoris at 68%. This makes sense because this is the only muscle of the four that crosses two joints because it crosses both the hip joint and the knee joint, making it more likely for this muscle to be strained compared to others when individuals are moving playing football. So a key condition in clinical practice is patellofemoral pain. And previously it's been suggested that the vastus medialis muscle has an important role for patella stabilization during movement. In the past, we may have seen specific vastus medialis strengthening as the way to rehabilitate this condition. However, evidence suggesting that the vastus medialis muscle can be isolated during quadriceps strengthening has been considered as poor quality, and we no longer think it's possible to do this through certain exercises. So what might be some examples of exercises we can use to strengthen the quadriceps muscles? So there are loads of different exercises we can use for quadriceps strengthening. Let's start with some open chain exercises like these leg extensions, excellent for both patellofemoral pain or even patella tendinopathy. With patellofemoral pain in particular, you may focus on the terminal range of movement between let's say 60 degrees of flexion to zero degrees extension, as we commonly find that this is the range of movement in which patellofemoral pain can be irritated. An exercise you'll see time and time again, particularly in the early stages of rehab, is a straight leg raise, which is really great for strengthening the quadriceps, particularly the rectus femoris, because of the hip flexion component as well. Especially when there's no weight involved, this can be easy for patients to replicate anywhere and in a way that's manageable for them. 
However, closed chain compound exercises are where we really get our best bang for buck in terms of the kinetic chain involving the lower limb, particularly the quadriceps muscles. So we can use lunges, as you can see here, as well as something like a squat movement. Remember, you can vary the range of how low the hips come down in order to tolerate your patient's pain better. And of course, if your patient's a gym goer, something like the leg press is an excellent exercise to use where they can monitor how much weight they're pushing so that they can track their progress as well. And that completes this video on the clinical anatomy of the quadriceps muscles. If you've enjoyed this video, we'd really appreciate it if you can smash that like button. And remember, we've got loads more resources on our Instagram account, at Clinical Physio, and on our website, clinicalphysio.com. My name's Khalid. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon, here on Clinical Physio.